The United States has tried repeatedly, without success, to obtain a list of the hundreds of American prisoners held by the North Vietnamese. Well, apparently, the Pentagon has found out who a lot of those men are, despite Hanoi's lack of cooperation. The Incredibly Stupid One, The Conflicts and Compromise of Douglas Hegdahl. It was the 1960s. The Vietnam War was raging on. His country called, and Douglas Hegdahl went to answer it. Douglas Brent Hegdahl III, born September 3, 1946, in Clark, South Dakota. At age 20, Hegdahl joined the U.S. Navy as a postal clerk and then an ammunition handler, thinking this is how he wanted to explore the world. It turns out, the great adventure he was hoping for would turn into his worst nightmare. After being promoted to an ammunition handler on the USS Canberra on April 6, 1967, Hegdahl was thrown overboard by the powerful blows of a 5-inch gun mount into the Gulf of Tonkin with no life preserver and no identification. Hegdahl's shipmates failed to report his absence to their commander for two days. Everyone assumed Hegdahl had died from falling overboard and they even held a memorial service for him. What they didn't know was that once Hegdahl had seen the ship go on without him, he decided that he was not going to give up. He floated about in the Gulf of Tonkin for 12 hours before Cambodian fishermen found him and pulled him out of the water. Though the fishermen treated Hegdahl kindly, they turned him over to the Vietnamese forces. The soldiers clubbed him repeatedly with their rifles before taking him to the infamous prison camp Wo Lo, or more commonly known as Hanoi Hilton. Hundreds of atrocities went on inside the Hanoi Hilton prison camp. Although the Geneva Convention of 1949 outlined the treatment of wartime prisoners, the North Vietnamese considered the American soldiers war criminals and did not follow those guidelines. Prisoners were given only a can to use to go to the restroom. The prison was in horrible condition and was nearly uninhabitable. Rats, mosquitoes, and flies infested the cells, which were dirty and grimy. Torture in Wo Lo was brutal. Prisoners were whipped and beaten often, and solitary confinement was a popular method of torture that sometimes lasted months at a time. In this situation, almost no light could penetrate their room and they were not allowed to have contact with other humans. Prisoners were often hung from large meat hooks that were attached to the ceiling, and their feet were locked in stocks or irons only allowing them to sit. When Doug Hegdahl was brought to interrogators, they believed that he was a CIA agent for the U.S. and they didn't believe his story about being blown off the ship. Instead of giving up information to the Vietnamese, Hegdahl pretended to be an illiterate fool. When he was asked to write anti-war statements, he agreed but then asked how to spell each word. This was one of the many tricks he would use against the North Vietnamese to convince them that he was gullible. They were dumbfounded. They had never met a man who would write anti-war statements without being tortured beforehand. In what became one of the greatest hoax against the Vietnamese in the prison camp, Hegdahl lied to them and said he couldn't read or write. The Vietnamese were determined to use a prisoner that was willing to write anti-war statements, so they hired a teacher to try to teach Hegdahl to read and write. During these lessons, he tried to act as brainless as possible to continue to trick the Vietnamese. After the teacher had repeatedly tried and failed to teach him, the Vietnamese gave up on him. They were convinced that he was not smart enough to be an agent and even went as far as giving him the name, the incredibly stupid one. Deciding Hegdahl was no threat, he was allowed to roam around the prison for two hours a day almost completely free, even though they made him sweep the grounds of the courtyard. The Vietnamese thought Hegdahl was harmless, but they were awfully wrong. From 1967 to 1969, Hegdahl's time at Wo Lo, he was able to easily perform small actions of bravery to plague the Vietnamese forces. One day, Hegdahl was raking leaves in the prison yard. When he thought no one was looking, he dumped dirt and leaves into five of the army truck's gasoline tanks. When soldiers climbed into the trucks, they found they would not run and the trucks had to be towed out of the camp to be fixed. Each afternoon, the Vietnamese would often take a two-hour rest. During this time, Hegdahl would sweep and code or pass notes to communicate with other prisoners in their cells. Of all the bravery credited to Hegdahl, his amazing memory proved to be what saved the lives of hundreds of Wo Lo prisoners and provided valuable information to those back home. 
Hecto had an amazing memory and could remember things unusually well. Lieutenant Joseph Kraka Jr. took advantage of this talent. Kraka was Hegdal's cellmate for a period of time and spent days on end helping Hegdal memorize the names of all the prisoners. The whole time Hegdal was in Hanoi Hilton, he practiced memorizing the names of prisoners, the dates of when they arrived at the prison, their capture dates, and other personal information in order to verify the authenticity of the name. To do this, Hegdal used a mnemonic device, a simple song we all know. He memorized over 250 prisoner names to the tune of the classic nursery rhyme, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. So when he'd ask me, Lieutenant Colonels, I go, Lieutenant Colonels Crow, Jim Hughes, Jim Lamar, Gordon Larson, Robbie Reisner, Strickman, Major General Baker, Hal Burns, Jim Jack Moore, Dick, said, Don Burns, Ron Burns, Art Ralph, Fred Cherry, Will Gideon, Larry Wiener, Jim Highshell, Ken Huey, Sam Johnson, Lou Mikowski, Ray Mer Merritt, Al Runyon, and blurted it out. You know, my debrief when I got back, he, he, he said, can you slow it down? I said, no, it's like riding a bicycle and you tip over, you know. During this time, the Vietnamese continually tried to make themselves look good through acts of propaganda, including the release of prisoners. For no apparent reason, the Vietnamese always released three prisoners at a time. Usually after months of torture, the North Vietnamese were able to find prisoners at their breaking point who wanted to go home, which was a direct violation of their senior officers. A pact, no go home early, had been made within the camp. There would be no early release for some prisoners. They would all go home together, or none would go at all. With no volunteers, Hegdal became an obvious choice for the Vietnamese to send home. He was the incredibly stupid one. What harm could he do? Doug refused to leave, but was ordered to accept an early release by the Plantation Prison USA Senior Ranking Officer, Colonel Hervey Stockman. Being his cellmate, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Stratton delivered the order. This created a personal conflict for Hegdal. He knew that if a man who hadn't been tortured ever took an early release, they were seen as a coward. Even though Hegdal had been tortured, he didn't want to be seen as a traitor and was hesitant to go, but Stratton knew that Hegdal was the only chance they had to get information back to the U.S. Stratton told his cellmate, You are the most junior. You have the names. You know firsthand the torture stories behind many of the propaganda pictures and news releases. You know the locations of many of the prisons. Hector finally agreed with Stratton. He would go home. The information he had was too important to the U.S. government and the families of the prisoners of war for him to stay. On August 4, 1969, Hegdal and two other prisoners from Wauwolo were released to an American anti-war delegation and boarded a plane for home. The information Doug carried was critical to the survival of his fellow prisoners. He was able to provide military and intelligence authorities' names they did not already have on their missing in action lists. Soon after arriving in the U.S., Hegdal was sent to Paris by Ross Perot to participate in the North Vietnamese Peace Talk delegation, and it was here that Doug became a true hero to those still in captivity. The ruse was up. The North Vietnamese had been fooled by Douglas Hegdal. The information that he shared at this meeting, such as naming prisoners and the locations of prison camps and describing conditions at the prisons, were now known to the world. The North Vietnamese could no longer deny the facts. In the end, it was this information that forced the North Vietnamese to keep soldiers like Stratton alive until the war was over. When Richard Stratton discovered this, he stated, Thanks to Doug, despite the scars on my body, the communists had to produce me alive at the end of the war. This alone makes the incredibly stupid one my personal hero. He is the archetype of the innovative, resourceful, and courageous American sailor. Even though he was the only one of the 11 prisoners of war given permission to leave early, he was still disliked and portrayed as a coward when he returned home. Because of this, Hegdal was never given the honor or recognition he deserves for his bravery. Here is a man who overcame a difficult situation and showed extreme bravery and courage in the process without asking for anything in return. He was confronted with an impossible decision and did what needed to be done in order to save his comrades and honor his country. As Colonel Stratton said in our interview, As long as we have the dugs of this world, our country 
will retain its freedoms. Douglas Hegdahl is not the incredibly stupid one. He is an American hero, a fine example for us all. He remains, even today, an unsung hero of the Vietnam War.